Uh, I love the clarinet. I love the way it sounds. It's got that soothing, mellow tone to it. Um, and, I, and I thank you for joining and sharing your talents with us. Uh, I'm gonna just, a couple more quick shouts. Candace, it's good to see your smiling face. Uh, it's good to see all your smiling faces. I know we are few today. Uh, much of our church family, uh, as, as was shared with us, is, is up at camp meeting. Uh, a time when many of, of our brothers and sisters get together so that they can enjoy a special fellowship. Before I jump in, let's, let's just have a quick word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for another Sabbath day, a day that we can come together, a day that we can spend time with you, spend time with family, get into your word. And as we look at your word today, may we be able to take something from it. May we be able to take and live out what you would have us do. In your name I pray, amen. Everywhere you look, you see them. From cars to clothes, foods to computers, in grocery stores, restaurants, doctor's offices, and at home. They are everywhere. Little thought is given to them, yet the impact that they play in our lives is undeniable. Labels have been a part of society as long as any of us can remember. We use them to organize or identify items. We even use labels to categorize people. Labels have a long history. The earliest known label was found in King Tutankhamun's tomb. It was on a container which identified the wine type, the year it was made, where it was made, and who had made it. Fast forward to the early 1700s to a French monk, Pierre Perignon, who took a piece of parchment, wrote on it with his hand, and attached it with a string to a bottle of wine. Let's jump forward to the 1960s to another major advancement in labels with the self-adhesive label, one that we're all very familiar with today. And finally, as you look today, labels aren't necessarily a piece of paper, but they come in an electronic format. And while labels have had a profound benefit on society, I'd like to propose that they've had a march a much darker, sinister effect. I'd like everybody to turn with me to Luke 19. Luke 19, and we are going to take and read uh, verses 1 through 7. I think you all know this story fairly well. It's the story of Zacchaeus. Luke 19, verses 1 through 7. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and, one, and was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through that way. When through that way, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down and received him gladly. When they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. You see, society was looking upon Zacchaeus. They had labeled him. He was a tax collector. 
and to them was somebody of less worth. Less worth because of his profession and the actions that he took because of his profession. But that's not the only label that people have experienced. Let's, let's turn to another story. Let's turn to John 4. And we're going to look at John 4, and we'll do verses 7 through 9 to start. So John 4, verses 7 through 9. The woman at Samaria. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Get another label, a label of culture, a label that this Samaritan woman had placed upon herself, a label of lesser value than someone else, a label of lesser value than a Jew. But yet there is still another story, another story regarding labels that I would like us to turn to, and that's found in Luke 7. So let's go to Luke 7, and we are going to read verses 36 through 39. So Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 39. Now one of the Pharisees was requesting him to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. Again, yet another label. Another sinner. And when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. And standing before him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with the hair of her head and kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. Now when the Pharisee, who had invited him, saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Yet another label, a label because of Mary's situation in life, a label that has been placed on her because of society. You see, the labels placed on Zacchaeus, the woman at the well, and Mary Magdalene look to minimize. They look to devalue. They look to separate them from everyone else. It looked to mask who they really were. Much like in Jesus' time, the world today looks to impose labels on each of us. Society looks to place you in a certain group with those labels. And so to, so to kind of demonstrate that, uh, I, have, I have a little exercise we're going to go through. Um, I have some labels here. My first label, I, I did this one for, for my niece, cat lover. We know there are people who are cat lovers, right? Cat lover. I, on the other hand, am not a cat lover. My family knows this. I... I'm a dog lover. So I'm going to put that there. Now, I know there's people who may be watching online or people who are in our congregation who might, they might be Chevy people, right? They, they, love, they love Chevy cars. 
But, but I don't want to leave our brothers and sisters out who are Ford people. We know we have a number of Ford people here, right? I heard that amen, right? Then, then we have people who they pronounce themselves as a Christian. Right? So, not too bad, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't we? Maybe even more specific, they pronounce themselves as a Seventh-day Adventist. Not, not to ignore our, our church's health message, uh, we have people who are vegans. So let's, put the, let's, put the, let's put vegan up here. Right? All right. But I also know that we do have people who, who do like to, to partake in uh, meat, and I, meat according to Leviticus, right? All right. So let me, I'll put that up. I'll put that up here. Now, now these these ones are are pretty simple, but I'm, I'm we're going to start getting a little bit more serious. Maybe those are there are those who are called liberals. All right, we we I think we've all heard that, right? And we we hear that more in the news. So we got some liberals. Conservatives, right? And then we have those that maybe they're conservatives. Or as we've been living through some pretty tough times and we're coming out of those, we know we know that we have those people who who we like to call vaxxers, right? People who are in support of, of the vaccine. Or, or we have those people who maybe, maybe they're not so much, right? We have our anti-vaxxers. Hmm. Let's dig a little deeper. Society today likes to maybe put us in as a Republican. Right? Or maybe they put us in as a, as a Democrat. Maybe you're, you're an anti-masker. Well, I don't know what's going on here, but... Or maybe, maybe you're a masker, right? You really, you really support those. Maybe, hmm, maybe we really support our, our officers, our police, right? And those blue lives matter. Or maybe, maybe our black lives matter, right? Right? Maybe we'll get more specific and maybe, maybe you're a Trumper. Or maybe, just maybe, you're a Biden supporter. Oop, I peeled that. Let me get my Biden supporter here. It's getting hard to see. Is it not? Uh, maybe you're a Biden supporter. And before we know it, we've had all these labels. They've been placed on us. You know, I truly believe that Satan uses labels. He's using labels in this world to distort who we are. He's looking to separate. He's looking to divide. He's looking to blur our relationships. Our relationships with God in our view of our fellow man. He utilizes labels to control our actions or lack thereof. Satan utilizes labels to attack that which we have been called to do, 
Turn with me to Matthew 22. In Matthew 22, it takes and tells us what we are called to do. Boy, it's getting hard to read. I gotta remove this one. I gotta be able to see a little bit, right? But if, if we look in Matthew 22, and we look at verses 37 and verses 38, Jesus tells us, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. Then the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So let's, let's take a look really quick. Let's go back to Zacchaeus. Let's go back to Luke chapter 19. And let's go back to uh, verses 8 through 10. And let's see how Christ handled these labels. So Luke chapter 19, verses 8 through 10. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, Jesus saw past Zacchaeus' label. He stripped his label away, exposing who Zacchaeus was, a son of God. He took and transformed Zacchaeus at that moment in time. Let's jump forward to the woman at the well. Let's look at John 4. John 4, verses 28 and 29. And in John 4, verses 28 and 29, so the woman left her water pot, and this is after she had her experience with Jesus at the well. So the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to men, come, see a man who told me all things that I have done. This is not the Christ. <clears throat> and they went out of the city and were coming to him. You, you see, a woman who was avoiding society was transformed. She was changed because Christ stripped away her label and looked at her for who she truly was. Now let's look. Let's look at Luke 7. Luke 7, verses 44 through 50. So in Luke 7, verses 44 through 50, turning towards a woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she, <clears throat> but she since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume. For this reason, I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little, loves little. Then he said to her, your sins have been forgiven. Those who were reclining at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this man who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, 
Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Jesus freed Mary from her label. He provided forgiveness. He provided peace. This past year has been, been a difficult time in this world, a difficult time for all of us. And it is one that has imposed labels, labels on each and every one of us, labels that may have caused you to look differently at God or at your fellow man. Labels that have controlled your actions or lack thereof. Labels that have been placed upon you or that you have placed on others. Labels that may have moved you away from loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. Labels that have made us all unrecognizable. It is time... It's time to let God strip away the labels so that we can see God, so that we can see ourselves, so that we can see our fellow man. God wants the labels removed. He wants the labels gone. He wants us to be seen for who we truly are, children of God, deserving of love, deserving of forgiveness, deserving of peace. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you we thank you for your son who came to this earth. We thank you for his example. We thank you for his willingness to pull away the labels, the labels that Satan and this world would have imposed upon us, labels that make us unrecognizable, and labels that cloud our vision of you and our fellow man. Lord, may we, like Christ, remove the labels from our friends, from our family, from our church family, from our community, so that we may do what you would have us to do. Show your love to our fellow man and to love you. This is our prayer. Amen.